Now, why Rudraksh is worn on the body is, one thing is it cleanses the aura. You know what's aura? A-U-R-A. There is a certain field of light and energy around every body, around every object. Every physical object has its own aura, even inanimate objects. These days it is being photographed and recorded in so many different ways. It cleanses your aura. Aura can be from a pitch black aura to a pure white aura. If you have seen, maybe not so much in America, but if you have seen any of the Spanish pictures or Indian pictures, you will see if they saw any saint or sage, always there will be a white halo around their head. It is not that these people walked around with uh, light bulbs behind their heads. <laughs> it is just that the artist is trying to impress upon you that this is a pure being. He had a pure white aura, that's what is being conveyed. So from a pitch black aura to a pure white aura you can have. Another reason why it's owned by the Indian sadhus and mendicants is they are constantly traveling. One who is constantly eating and sleeping in different places, his body goes through a certain level of destabilization. In the sense, many of you might have noticed this, you went to a new place, even if you're very exhausted, somehow in a certain place your body won't settle down and sleep. Have you noticed this ever? If you're a traveling person, you would have noticed it in some places, your body just won't settle down. You're fully exhausted, but you cannot sleep. This is because in your own house, in your own bedroom, you are sleeping in the same bed every day. Here, certain aspect of your energy is left here, here you're very comfortable. If you go to another place where the energies are very different, your body may not settle, sometimes it could be damaging to the system. So person who is constantly traveling wears a Rudraksh so that he has a cocoon of his own energy that the outside energies does not disturb him. He has a… we call this a kavacha. You know what's a kavacha? It's a cocoon of your own energy. Wherever you go, you have your private bedroom going with you. It travels with you wherever you go. This also is a kind of protection. You know, people use negative energies to affect other people's lives. You're aware of this? Uh, what do you call that here? Yes, Billy Shunyam, the black magic or whatever you call it, there are various kinds of arts. One Veda, out of the four Vedas, one Veda is dedicated towards this. The Atharvana Veda is all about how to manipulate energies to your benefit and somebody's detriment. If you wear Rudraks, it also protects you against that kind of negative situations. Many times, these things could happen to people even though they are not directed towards them. Right now, let's say somebody is doing some black magic to me, but I am not receptive to it. You are sitting here, you may get it. It is not necessary, it must be aimed at you. If you are susceptible at a certain moment, you will get it. So, many, many times people may go through bad patches and things like that. Don't describe this, I don't want to create fear in your mind. But many times we have seen people being influenced by certain things, not knowing what's happening, blaming all kinds of things not knowing what exactly is happening with themselves. Wearing a simple mala gives a certain level of protection for that person. The main purpose is to make you available to grace. Because ultimately, it doesn't matter what circus you do, what yoga you do, what else you do, ultimately it's only by becoming available to grace you become a possibility. This is why a devotee attains quicker than anybody because he just offers himself like that. If that sense of offering and things are not brought in, yoga will become circus. Without grace, whatever you do, whether it is spiritual process, health, wealth, success, there will be no success in any area of life if in some way you do not become available to grace, that's for sure. Either you become consciously available or unconsciously in your own way you became available, okay? Every human being, every creature is becoming available in some way. But if you're consciously making that a part of your life, then 
everything works, you know, it's well lubricated life, everything works easy and smooth. So Rudraksha is just creating that possibility, enhancing it a little bit. Not that without Rudraksha you will not be available to grace, you will be. It is just that you want to use every support that is available to you. Has it ever happened with you that you paid a visit to someone and when you left them, you felt sad, you felt upset for no reason at all? The reverse also must have happened with you. When you paid a visit to someone and when you left them, you felt happy and peaceful. That is the power of the company. That is the power of the vibrations and energy that every person carries with him. Today in this talk, I am going to talk about that. On the spiritual path, it becomes all the more important to see what sort of people are around you. When you are a spiritual seeker, it becomes extremely important that you keep company of only those who are on the same path as yours because their energy, their thoughts can affect you deeply. When you are around people whose vibrations are not good, then your mind can absorb those vibrations and feel deeply affected. That's why when you leave someone's company, you feel depleted of all energy. It's like they sucked up all your energy. So you must be really careful. Max Ehrman, the American poet, wrote a beautiful poem called Desiderata. It's a prose poem and there he writes, Avoid loud and aggressive persons. They are vexatious to the spirit. How very true these words are. What they mean is, you get deeply affected, you get deeply influenced by the company you keep. It tells you to avoid the company of those who are loud and aggressive because their state of mind will become yours if you remain in their company. Then it says that those person who are loud and aggressive are vexatious to the spirit, which means if you remain with such people, then they take you away from your real self, then they take you away from your divine infinite nature. On the other hand, if you remain with people who are silent and peaceful, then their vibrations and thoughts will help you on your spiritual path. In their company, you will feel calm and serene. This happens because you come closer to your real self, to your divine nature. Haven't you noticed this? When you visit any spiritual master, you feel so peaceful, so calm. Why? Because you imbibe their vibrations, you absorb their vibrations. And, and that's why you feel so calm and peaceful. So you must be careful about the company you keep. And it's not only about people. The same is true about the books you read. Every thought has vibrations. It is nothing but an energy movement. Its frequency will depend on its source. If you read a book by an enlightened master, their words will simply lift your spirits. You must have experienced this in your life, right? On the other hand, if you read some motivational or inspirational book, it wouldn't have any positive effect on you. It's because that book has come from that kind of source which wasn't aligned to the divine infinite self. 
Now let me share with you a beautiful story from the great writer George Bernard Shaw's life. It will show you that every place and person has some vibrations associated with them and it affects you deeply. When Bernard Shaw turned 70, he said to his friend, I don't want to die at 70. And people everywhere say that it's the average age. It's the age at which most people die. I'm not an average person. I have been excellent in every field and I want to excel in death too. His friend replied, Are you mad? Have you gone crazy? Does it ever happen like that? But Bernard Shaw had deep conviction in what he thought. He thought age has something to do with vibrations of the place a person lives in. So there must be a place where people think that it's absolutely fine, it's absolutely okay to live beyond 100. It's normal for them. He started looking for such a place where people would live beyond the age of 100. He would visit the cemetery and look at tombstone, how long the person lived. At most cemeteries, the average age was 70. But soon he found a cemetery where the age on most tombstones was above 100. Then he decided to live in that place. And he was right in his conviction. He lived beyond 100. Bernard Shaw proved one fact that your body and your mind are deeply impressed by the vibrations of the place that you live in.